And then I saw them, I saw them start shooting the kids. And, and the horror and the shock in which the darkness can win the light. I, I couldn't, I couldn't grasp, I couldn't understand how is it possible that the darkness wins? And my soul, my soul left and I, I was killed. And that memory stayed with me of how is it possible that such darkness can overcome and win? Mm -hmm. And so you went to the light, mm -hmm. you saw yourself being welcomed by your loved one and uh, but then you still had that question. Yeah. And you said, hey, <laughs> how come I had to experience so much darkness? And then you got an answer. What was the answer? That that was the memory of me not wanting to, to come back down. Mm -hmm. As I said, my soul doesn't want to come back to a place where the darkness wins. It, it was kind of like staying in a mother's arms, staying in a place of light, saying, I want to stay where the light is. I don't want to go down to the darkness again. If, that's, if those are the rules of the game where the darkness wins, no thank you, I'm out. And when I went back... Um, when I went back and I, you told me to ask, how come I was exposed to such darkness? And he told me that any darkness you see is to shift it. You can't shift anything into, into light if you weren't exposed to that darkness before, if you haven't seen it and experienced it. So anything you see and experience as darkness, there's, there's a, an option there. There's, a, there's a possibility there to then later shift that into light. I like felt like I can breathe again and it wasn't only peace it was it was kind of like remembering that wait this isn't this isn't where it ends there's a continuation yeah. to this so Sarah you came one year ago uh, with this intention to start a healing journey you were sensing that you wanted to step into your life purpose and into your full power but uh, you were sensing a resistance uh, to do it. And so we started this journey um, by exploring what could be the origin of this resistance. I've always lived with the long sense of, um, of my soul not really fully wanting to be here. And it was like the sensation that I carried within me. Um, oh, it was a mixture of both long of longing and a huge amount of sorrow and sadness. That it, they were just like constant emotions inside me that I would carry within. Where I just felt a longing for a place that I knew that exists mm -hmm. that I used to be in, and I know I, I I just know that it's a place that's better than here. Um, it's a place that's pure, it's a place that's clean. And my soul just wanted to go back there. I didn't really understand even why I was here, like why I was sent here. I felt like it was done by mistake. Um, as they say that, that a soul chooses to come down here. And I felt like I wasn't choosing to come down here. But there was, there was a Hasidic story of, um, of uh, Rabbi Nachman is called in Hebrew Halev Vehamaayan, a heart and a spring, which their whole life desire is just to come back to each other, meet each other, and their whole life they're longing for each other. And I remember learning it for the first time. I was 18 at the time, and I remember my body just started shivering, like the whole room just started getting really foggy and dense. Because I knew that this was the sensation that I was feeling during prayer. I had someone. I had a story that can explain what I was longing for. My soul was like, it was telling me, why? Why stay? And it would come up, like, we would have, like, family events and going out with friends and, like, eating at good restaurants. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, amazing. And I was like, this isn't it. I know this isn't it. And I couldn't fully enjoy it. Um, and... And it was this pain inside me. So this sensation that you are describing, it's a sensation that is actually not so uncommon. And uh, the, the only thing is that 
uh, you had some clarity about it to, to be able to pinpoint what it was, but most people feel that uh, anguish at the moment when there is a separation from the light. And, uh, you know, as they grow up, they forget, you know, the origin of this uh, and it's becoming, you know, a form of anxiety or sensation that there is an inner void, a uh, sensation that uh, sometimes I'm out of place. And, you know, finally people are trying and succeeding more or less uh, to cover it up and to compensate with all kind of um, you know, whether it's addiction or it's work or it's trying to find a purpose uh, that would be more or less close to what we think uh, is expected from a human being. But most people have that. They are not just able to understand that it's this sensation of separation uh, from the source. And so in your case, there were uh, different imprints, different levels of imprints and memories that were actually of a different origin, that were actually, that were preventing you to step into your life calling. We actually located the sensation in your body, yeah. and from that imprint that was in your body, in your etheric field, we went directly to the origin, to the root cause of the presence of that imprint, and this is the memory that was recorded there. Yeah. I asked you to go back into the womb of your mother. And from that place, you were experiencing like the sensation of being cold and the sensation of not wanting to be here and the sensation of having, having been forced to come down. And so we went from that from that imprint, we sent you to the time just before this life incarnation, just before you were being sent to see what happened there. And so what did you see? I was entering like this huge hallway where there were rows and rows of light. And um, it, was, it was as if I was looking at different souls mm -hmm. that they were in an in-between um, place where they were either going up or down and they were just waiting for like these angels who were passing through to send them up or down um, and what I remember was that I saw myself in one of in one of these locations about to be sent up or down and I saw someone come to me with a cape and I couldn't see his face and he grabbed me by the arm and he sent me down. And I was like, oh, this is, this is the sensation, this is the feeling that I have where I felt like I was forced, mm -hmm. that I didn't choose to come down. And mm -hmm. this never made sense to me because I always thought your soul was supposed to choose to come down. And this was exactly the memory of having that I was like, wait a second, I don't want to be doing this and someone is sending me down. You didn't have an arm back then, but you were feeling the imprint on your arm as if you had been pulled down against your will uh, and if you were dragged by the arm, right? Mm -hmm. We uh, kind of gathered the council up there in the upper world and we asked, how come Sarah has been forced to come down? Yeah. And they didn't want to give a clear clue, but they told you it was about healing. And they gave you a, a clue that the imprint of that healing was in the sensation you had in the arm. And so we started, we, we dived into this sensation of the arm yeah. and it took you to a past life. Yeah. So I saw myself in the Holocaust. Um, I saw myself as a male, as a rabbi and a teacher in a children's room, which is called a cheder. And I saw myself sitting there with students and teaching them these little children. And what happened was that I saw the Nazis come in and they took me by the same arm. 
and what happened was so you felt the sensation of you being dragged at yes. some place yeah by your arm by the nazis and so that was actually the ip address <laughs> of where this healing needed to take place yeah it was being forced i'm being taken to a place that i don't know where it is and then i saw them i saw them start shooting the kids and and the horror and the shock in which the darkness can win the light i i couldn't i couldn't grasp i couldn't understand how is it possible that the darkness wins and with with that sensation i remember saying shmai sel and my soul my soul left and i i was killed and that memory stayed with me of how is it possible that such darkness can overcome and win mm -hmm. and so you went to the light and then you saw everybody waiting for you there yeah. you saw yourself being welcomed by your loved one and uh, but then you still had that question yeah and you said hey <laughs> how come i had to experience so much darkness yeah. and then you got an answer what was the answer and i understood also by seeing that darkness that that was the memory of me not wanting to, to come back down mm -hmm. as i said my soul doesn't want to come back to a place where the darkness wins it, it was kind of like staying in a mother's arms Staying in a place of light, saying, I want to stay where the light is. I don't want to go down to the darkness again. If that's, if those are the rules of the game where the darkness wins, no thank you, I'm out. And when I went back, um, when I went back and I, you told me to ask, how come I was exposed to such darkness? How come I had to see so, so much darkness? And when I asked, I asked the same angel that took me to the cape. How come he's taking me down and how come I have to come back? And he told me that any darkness you see is to shift it, that you can't shift any darkness. You can't shift anything into, into light if you weren't exposed to that darkness before, if you haven't seen it and experienced it. So anything you see and experience as darkness, there is there's an option there. There is, a, there is a possibility there to then later shift that into light. I like felt like I can breathe again and it wasn't only peace it was it was kind of like remembering that wait this isn't this isn't where it ends there's a continuation yeah. to this uh -huh. the light is always going to win but the, the reason there's reasons for the darkness and the exposure to it and how to work with it and shift it um, and I realized that it was a responsibility that I was given mm -hmm. um, and that I can work with it mm -hmm. And that gave me peace and I was like, I felt like I was ready to come down again. Mm. We went back to the rows of soul. Yeah. Before you were being launched into <laughs> earth. And then you saw that same man, that same being that came with the cape. Yeah. But this time you could see his face, right? Yeah. It was not hidden anymore. Yeah. And and I remember you were saying the first time you saw him and he sent you, you were saying, I don't trust this this person. <laughs> I had a very bad feeling about him, like something. I didn't trust him. Yeah, something wrong happened here. Yeah. Like an intruder had come into the soul chambers <laughs> and did a trick, you know? And so at this point you were seeing him again. This time you could see his face. He told you I trust you oh. and you had a, a kind of sensation of, of a mutual trust for each other before you before you went at this point mm. right and you were like feeling really like you were being entrusted to do something not easy and you were proud to do it this time mm. right yeah and so now you're being sent, you go back to the belly of your mother. 
and now you re-experience the whole pregnancy, your soul adjusting and being in this, you know, landing slowly, slowly, gradually into this dimension, hearing the voices of your parents, the voices of your siblings, uh, wondering if you, they are going to understand where you're coming from after, you know, seeing so much darkness and you knew that they didn't have that same experience. And so you were proud and happy to, to this time to, to, to go for it. But at the same time, you had that kind of anxiety if you were going to meet the understanding of uh, the people you loved that didn't go through the same thing as you, that would maybe not understand what you went through. But at least you were ready to be launched <laughs> <laughs> one more time. And so you went through the birth canal again. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because when we did that rebirth, I, I felt like it was the first time that I was able to do that rebirth because I went to this this guru, guru who he said, we're going to do rebirth. And I can never get through that sensation of the pain of not wanting to get to come down. And once I was able to process why that happened and have an understanding, I had a choice. Yeah. And an acceptance. And then I was able to do the rebirth. Yeah, because you cannot redo the, you cannot do the rebirthing if you don't understand why it happened wrong in the first place. Right. So you had to heal first what was on the way in order to be able to rebirth from a full, from a place of empowerment, a place of embracing this life incarnation. And so this is what you did. After we had this amazing uh, healing experience, uh, in during one of the journeys, uh, you had this uh, sensation that you had to to, to stop, to take a break because you, you were feeling your ma grandmother was calling you and was needing you. Yeah. And at this point, she was uh, unconscious in ER for already some time. So my mom called me that morning and she said that my grandma, Alea Shalom, um, was in the ER. And that morning, the doctors told my mom to start organizing the burial cer ceremony. Um, they came to my mom and they said, that's it. And my mom called me and I was in tears trying to figure out if I go home, would I make it in time for the burial or to, to make it after? And, um, and I was, had this in mind and then we, we did a session later that day. You were feeling the soul of your grandmother was uh, calling you. And so we went to see what she, what she was up to. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I remember we were in the middle of the session, I was like down on the couch and all of a sudden, suddenly I saw grandma come and I like immediately started crying. Um, my grandmother herself was a Holocaust survivor and, um, and when she came to me, I asked her if there's anything that she wants from me. One of the things that she told me was that she wants my help to get rid of the anger. As a Holocaust survivor, she had um, she was she was just holding all that resentment towards the Germans and the Nazis, and she said before her soul rises, she wants help to get rid of that. So I I, I explained you how to do this work yeah. on uh, with energy healing yeah. at the distance, and you start doing it. Yeah, you start transmuted transmuting the anger mm -hmm. for her, and while you were doing this, I felt my heart was turning black into charcoal. And you told me, no, that when you heal people, you can't take it into yourself. So I sent that anger away. We transmuted the anger. We, we didn't send it away. <laughs> because it's when, when we are healing, uh, when we do energy healing, or we, it's very important to be very responsible on how we transmute energy, how we recycle energy. Because if you're just sending, um you know an energy of anger away it's at some point you know when the anger has set it in somebody's field for quite some time it acquires a kind of independence a consciousness of its own it's becoming a kind of somehow an entity of anger and then it goes and is just looking for another host 
So when we're doing this work, that's just a parenthesis that I'm opening. When we're opening, when we are doing this work, it's very important to be responsible on how we accompany this and um, this emotion, this uh, energy, and how we transmute it. So as you were transmuting, you were realizing that something was not happening right in the transmutation, and instead of transmuting, what you were doing is that you were just relocating it. Yeah. Yeah, I was taking her anger and I was putting it inside me. Yeah. Um, and when when you told me that I can't take it to me and you were transmuting it to where it needs to be sent to, um, I felt like it was it was completed, and um, and I saw her walk out to her family, and I saw a huge tribe of family waiting there, of other people. Um, from who were killed, families and friends and community. She was at peace. She was at peace. And there's a crazy happened. ending to the story. <laughs> um, I was I was like tearing. Uh, I was sure that I was sure that this was me saying goodbye to my grandma. And um, we finished that session. And um, on the next morning, I got another call from my mother, but, um, but this time there was different news. She said that, shockingly, my grandma was released from intensive care and the doctors are like in shock and in awe. <laughs> and a few days later, she, and I, she, she was, released from the hospital back home um, against all odds and crazy story um, the doctors always say survivors are very strong but like that's it they said like that that was the end um, so it was quite crazy ending um, of, of the story and I felt ever since that moment that there was a bond that was created between me and my grandma um, I ended up speaking a few months later she passed and I ended up speaking at her funeral um, and I just felt like um, she's so happy to get this intention this like attention mm -hmm. by the way <laughs> she is like so happy but I think that what's important and what's how we can you know honor her memory Regina right it yes. was her name how we can honor her memory is for everyone out there to understand how even in the last, first of all, what was amazing in this situation is that she could actually say goodbye, but from a place of peace to all her family, not from a place of anger. And uh, the, the very important thing to know is that even at the last moment of your life, healing is still needed because we don't heal just to have a better life we heal because it's a we, we it's a soul journey and so whatever we don't heal in this lifetime we come back with it in the next yeah. and so even if it's the last moment of this lifetime it's still so very important to heal it because you don't want to come back in your next life with the same imprint and even though when you go to the light in between, you have some kind of understanding, uh, you find some peace, you find some balance somehow, but whatever was not healed on that dimension remains an unfinished business. And so you do not come back, uh, you do not come back with the memory of the answers that you found in between in the lifetime you come back with the same state of consciousness, level of consciousness, where you ended at the end of your li last lifetime. Which was like me seeing the darkness. Exactly. And I had that sensation. So when you came back in this lifetime, you didn't come back with the understanding that you had to see the darkness because you didn't come to this realization in this, from this plane. You had to understand that from this plane. And so when you reach that level of understanding from this plane, while you're here, next time you come back, you will come back with this level of consciousness, with this level of understanding. You will not lose it because it has been acquired 
in this thing. So that's now part of your new level of consciousness. And so that's why it was such a gift for your grandmother that you were able to do that for her before she left. Mm -hmm. Healing is something you can delay, but it's not something you can escape. One day or another, it, it needs to be addressed. And so the, the, the sooner, the better, because the more layer you put on top of it to compensate, to bury the sensation of the incomfort, to, to try to not see it, it's just more layers that are gonna need to be later on. So it complicates. I think that sharing this journey was very important in this time we are going through because uh, a lot of people uh, are in a position of relieving past uh, life experience, past traumas, even in this lifetime. And there are a lot of uh, memories and imprints that are being reawakened with the, the, the situation that we are uh, living today all over the world. Um, Things ha are happening in different communities, in different places in the world where uh, we, we, you know, we live in a state of transition that brings a lot of confusion and a lot of um, uh, reenactment of um, struggles that we used to live in the, in the past in order for her, us to heal them and overcome them and be able to come out of this loop functioning from a different place. From a place of empowerment, from an empowered place, not from a place of being wounded or being the victim. So I have a question for you, Shava. I think in recently, um, not so long ago, on the 7th of October, there was so much um, ho um, Holocaust, World War II trauma that, that arose on the surface, um, both personal and mostly collective level. And um, talking about healing um, past lives now, I think many people who are watching um, can relate to those feelings, but then they're looking at the video and they're like, now what, right? Like it feels even overwhelming on, on the collective level of how to address it and what to do first. Um, as each one has their personal story and then there's the collective that you just, you can feel like in, in such pain and, and, and sorrow and numbness. Um, what would you say to these people um, who have these sensations, what, where to take it to, what to do next, or where to start from, or how, how to start addressing that pain. It's beyond the pain. The pain is just a symptom. So there is the pain that is inherent to experiencing darkness because you need to see it in order to be able to transmute it. And there is the pain that is inherent to us not embodying our purpose and not taking our place, just like it was your case with you thinking that you were not worthy enough or that you were not the proper person to do that. You understand? So there are many uh, different uh, aspects in this pain. It has so many components. So the part that is ours is to address the component that, uh, that are connected to us not healing the, the past wounds. Uh, acting from this place of being wounded, from this place of always being judged, of being always accused, of always needing to hide, justifying yourself that you have the right to exist, um, uh, justifying yourself that you're not stealing the resources of the world. Uh, there were so many accusations all, you know, along with the history that people are carrying now, and as soon as something happened, the whole drama and the whole history is reenacting in front of their eyes. And the reason why now it's reenacting is because there is, this is the time where we have to put, put a stop to this.